Good evening. Greetings. 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 Well, this is it. <laughs> uh, a conference uh, 2023. Um, thank you, Jesus. Um, unexpected, uh, a never changing God in an ever changing world. So, we're going to open up this conference and we're going to be blessed with prayer and um, praise by um, Lady Antoinette. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen, everybody. How you doing this evening? To God be the glory. Let's give him a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Uh, the word says, be ye ready in season. And out of season, right? Amen. To God be the glory. I, I was handed this piece of paper. First, I said, well, okay, I'm going to do the opening prayer for you. <laughs> then she came back and handed me a piece of paper and said, uh, see if you could, uh, this is our song. I said, okay, so they could, we're going to sing this song. Yeah. Now she's telling me to add it to what I'm going to do. <laughs> <laughs> to God be the glory. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to open with prayer. And um, I want you all to sing this song with me. Because yeah. I don't really know it that well, but I, I can count on the music. I can do it. All things through Christ. <laughs> and, uh, and then I will do a little something. Amen. 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 Let us bow our heads. Most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we come before you this evening for this conference. Father, we're kicking off this evening, giving you all the honor, glory, and praise. Father, we pray that you are here with us because your word said, there were two or three are uh, gathered in your name. Father, there you are in the midst. Welcome, Father. Welcome into this place. And Father, we invite your Holy Spirit to ascend upon this place and upon your servant this evening. We pray that something will be said or done that will leave an everlasting effect on those who are present. For those that are here were meant to be here. Those that are not were not. And we just thank you for your blessings. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your favor. We thank you for your mercy. Have your way this evening, Father. Let your will be done. This and all things we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen. All right. Now I'm gonna help you with this. All right. Climbed up to the highest mountain, looked all around, couldn't find nobody. Went down into the deepest valley, looked all around down there, couldn't find nobody. I went across the deep blue sea, couldn't find one to come in. To your grace, your love, your mercy, nobody greater, nobody greater than you. Searched all over, couldn't find nobody. Looked high and low, kids couldn't find nobody. Nobody greater, nobody greater, no, nobody greater than you. Searched all over. Couldn't find nobody. Your most holy one, 
you are blessed by it. Please pray for me. Like home from the 
Something that um, God laid on my heart as I read the date, it's say January 25th, 1988. So let's see how relevant it is. Today is October the 6th, 2023. Skip If all the sleeping folks would wake up, if all the lukewarm folks would fire up, if all the dishonest folks would fess up, if all the crooked folks would straighten up, if all the depressed folks would sober up, if all of the separated folks would make up, all the gossiping folks would shut up, <laughs> if all the discouraged folks would cheer up, if all the lying folks would hush up, if all the lazy folks would get up, if all the soldiers of God would stand up, this would be a better world. Amen. <laughs> That goes along, amen, with the, with the theme, amen, 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 amen. It just, everything's just coming together, and you know, it's all in his will and, and his way. And um, I just, I'm going to speak, but I'm going to speak just from the heart. Amen. I'm just going to talk, my talk, and let you all hear from me. And the, going back to the theme, and the theme is a never-changing God in an ever-changing world. And this world is definitely changing, and God never changes. Amen. Amen. We can start out from the beginning. If we go back to Genesis, God never changes. Amen. And I thought about that, and I thought about the um, scripture. I thought about Malachi um, 3 and 6. And for I am the Lord, and I change not. Amen? He said he doesn't change, and he doesn't change. His, um, his purpose doesn't change. His character doesn't change. His truth doesn't change. God is a spirit. He is love, and he is life. And God never changes. But we can see from this world and everything that's going on, and if we go and look at the word and go into the perilous times, and they're truly here. You know, we've got war and rumors of war. Yes. And we've got everything that's found in the word is going on right now. Yes. You know, but what God is saying to us, that we got to stand. Right. Yes. We've got yes. to stand because he changes not. And we've got to trust in him. We've got to believe in him yes. and lean on him, knowing that you know that you know that he is the one that is going to get us through all these tough times whatever it is you know he's coming back and we've got to know that we know and believe that he's coming back he's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle so yes. we've got to live this life now even when things are getting hard we've got to stand and we've got to when you've done all to stand stand yes. you know and no matter what comes against us whether it be the waves or the wind we still have to stand and we have to stand on the word and he is the word. Yes. He, said in, he, he said he was the word. So we know that he's the word. If we know the word of God, we know God. And if we know God, we know we must stand in, the, in these last days yes. to make it in. And we truly want to make it in, I tell Amen. you. Amen. So that's basically um, what he said to me back um, when I was doing another conference. Matter of fact, I was going down um, uh, Zanoa. Outside of um, Fayetteville, where you all from? Sonora. Uh -huh. Okay. We I used to go there to a retreat center and have and run conferences. Um, back in the uh, early 2020s or whatever, some mm -hmm. some back then. But he, um, I was having a conference and I was going down 20. I had. People had paid for the conference. This was one of those conferences that, you know, we paid ahead of time and this, that, and the other. And I had my speakers and I had um, Friday. And it, was, it was a whole lot of things going on. But everybody that was supposed to be going on Friday, because we have a tea, we have a tea at 4 o'clock on Fridays. And everybody that was supposed to go on Friday canceled out. They had every reason in, in I can't go, my dog died. 
you know, whatever it was, they had a reason why they couldn't go. But it reminded me of um, when they invited the people and they couldn't come. So I said, oh, okay, uh, I'm going. God gave me this conference just like he gave me this conference. And I don't care if it's two or three gathered together, he still gave me the conference. He gave me the thing, and I'm going to do what God called me to do. I'm going to walk in obedience. So it didn't matter if it was just me and her. <laughs> I was going to come. <laughs> I'm going to come no matter where I am. I thank the Lord for my daughter. Because she has always supported me or whatever. She's going to come no matter where she is. She's going to slide, drive, catch a bus, whatever it takes to get here. She's going to get here. She doesn't like the bus. I don't mind the bus. She says, I'm not catching no bus. So, but I was driving um, up. To Atlanta, I was on 20, and it was before they had those signs, the Amber Alert signs. Okay, but while I'm driving, there's a sign right in front of me. Okay, and I, you know, I knew I was seeing it in the spirit because there weren't any signs out. And this sign was across the highway, and it said, um, un uh, what's changed? Unexpected. He said, um, all things are subject to change. I said, all things are subject to change. Okay, because I wasn't bringing anybody with me. It was me by myself, and I was going to this conference, and I had planned for it, and the conference, the person, they were do, preparing all the meals, and we were having the tea, and then we were gonna have dinner, and then we were gonna have breakfast in the morning, and um, she has a prayer room, and it's fully made out of marble. It's awesome. So, and she wasn't even coming. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Something's up with this. And she says, well, I'll be late. I'll be there. I'll be there, but I'll be late, Mom. So um, I canceled the tea. So I said, okay. Uh, after I got there, I told her, I said, uh, well, I don't know when anybody's going to get here. And the first, uh, and it was a mother-daughter. The mother um, was the speaker, and the daughter was the psalmist or the worship leader. So the um, one um, mother daughter had gotten there, and the other mother daughter had called and said she was on her way. So I told um, the person, you know, just fix a little something for for them when they get there around six o'clock, so that we can have dinner. So that's what we did, and that's all that was there was these. Um, two mother-daughter, sets of mother-daughter, one from Atlanta and one from Augusta. Okay, so they fellowship with one another and they said they were so glad to have this time because they both were busy and they never had time to share with their daughter. And the mother didn't have time to share with the daughter and the daughter, and then God allowed me to, um, the, in this, um, retreat area, um, you picked your rooms and there were different rooms. So I put the, each mother and daughter in a room with twin beds. So they could spend the evening together and they had dinner and then they went up and they were able to um, just fellowship with one another because the mother was a uh, pastor's wife. I think both of them were pastor's wives. So they said they, you know, never get time alone and they never get time to do anything because everything's about um, church and everything else, you know, and raising a family, but she want, they wanted to spend time with their daughter and impart some things with their daughter. So I said, okay, God, and that's the way it went. I think about 10 o'clock, Yana showed up, <laughs> and a few other people came and that she had invited, and so a um, few people came, and uh, I signed them to their rooms, and they went on to their rooms or whatever. They had eaten before they got there. And then morning came, and at 5.30, I always had prayer. She had an awesome prayer room. Like I said, it was marble. I mean, from the top to the bottom, it was marble. It was nice, relaxing. So between 5.30 and 6, we went into the prayer room. And everybody came down that was there, and everybody started praying. 
And about seven o'clock, the hostess um, of this retreat area came down and she tapped me on the shoulder. On the shoulder, and she said, "Your guests are here." So my guests are here. So <laughs> I said, "She says, come, you come, come greet your guests." So I went upstairs to greet my to greet my guests. And there were five band loads. <laughs> five, and it was, um, it was, um, church, of, church, um, church of God in Christ, um, um, New Life, New Life Church of God in Christ. Um, she was my speaker for Saturday, and she brought her whole women's group. And they had already paid and everything was paid. So some people had paid double. So everything was taken care of. Everything was paid for. Didn't even have to wait for anything. Or, you know, and it, and then the way I did it was I had the first mother and daughter speak in the morning. Then we had lunch. And then I had the second mother and daughter speak in the afternoon. So, I mean, it was unexpected. It wasn't anything that I had planned, but God already knew. The way it was gonna go, and yeah, everything was subject to change. So we know that God doesn't change, but things change, and He changes things. And we have to know that we know that we know that is God, and that comes from knowing the voice of God. And the thing now is, um, everybody wants everything microwaved. They don't want to wait on God. They don't want to. Um, study the word they just want it now yes. and now is not god god will have you wait on him and in the word it tells us to wait on the lord yes. and be of good courage yes. not grudgingly just wait on the lord yes. and know that you know that he's coming through yes. no matter how he comes through yes. because some it's unexpected sometimes you think he's coming one way and he's coming another yes. but he still completes whatever he calls you to do and you will complete your destiny and whatever your purpose is if it's in god and you trust god you will be what god has called you to be yes. in these last and evil days yes. and so i just wanted to um introduce myself most of you know me i don't know um the depths of your knowing me but i'm going to introduce myself i have a bio but no, throw it to the to the wind. <laughs> but um, yes, I was um, born in New Jersey in um, 1951, January 1951, and uh, I stayed there until I was um, until I was 30, 31, somewhere in between 30 and 31. I um, um, God <laughs> pushed me <laughs> out of <laughs> out of New Jersey, out of the nest, what whatever. Uh, I was married at 18, and um, by the time I realized it wasn't <laughs> what God had called for, <laughs> I said, okay, God. <laughs> I said, okay, God. I had uh, things were rough and this, that, and the other, and I had a newborn baby. So um, I think by the time uh, I, I had uh, problems um, with, uh, with the birth or whatever, and... Um, when I, um, when they, they never told me, you know, back in the day, they never told you, they just told you you were high risk. Yeah. What is the high risk? Never, yeah. They never told me. They thought my baby had two heads. I tell you, I had a tumor the size of a grapefruit. And so all they could see, you know, and then, you know, you in the White House could win. Excuse me, but <laughs> I'm telling, I'm telling that you know, and you know, all they do is tell you this, that, and the other. And so I went to, um, and that was 19, uh, 1980, and I went to deliver, and um, they were telling me um, to wait to do this, that, and the other, and they were going to take me to take me to surgery. Okay, but I didn't know they were going to take me to surgery. I didn't know nothing. All I know is the baby came. And I said, the baby's here. And they telling me, <laughs> they telling me, no, the baby's not. <laughs> you know, but um, the baby was here. <laughs> and she, she had already um, come, her head had already come through. So yeah, her head had crowned, she had come through. 
And um, they were still telling me. And then the nurse comes down the hallway. So finally, after I'm howling and what to call it, she comes down the hallway and she turns and she looks up under my legs. And she said, she ran back down the hallway. Talking about the baby's here. <laughs> she was looking for help. <laughs> By this time, because I was still in, I wasn't in the delivery room. I was still, <laughs> yeah, in the room waiting. So, because uh, they thought they were going to do something. I don't know. But <laughs> and then, yeah, so then I, I, I had the baby and I had her in the room. And they went ahead and they, um, and they took her, and then some doctor that didn't know his head from a hole in the wall didn't even know why they were why they were waiting and why they were going to do a um, C-section or whatever they were going to do. See, he um, decides he's going to go in and take the afterbirth. Okay, the afterbirth is um, is a grapefruit. Tore my insides out. <laughs> But, and then I didn't know back then about suing and doing this, that, and the other, you know. I just know what the situation was. So, I, um, so after they did that, they decided, um, they decided they were going to do a D, uh, uh, DNC, uh, yeah, DNC. And, um, then they decided that they was going to have to cut me anyway. <laughs> so, they had to cut me to clean me out. To make sure that um, the, the the tumor, because the tumor was the size of a um, grapefruit, to make sure that they didn't leave anything or whatever, because he pulled it out, and that caused me problems even afterwards, because I had to have a hysterectomy like within five years because my uterus had fallen or dropped or whatever, yeah, through through the agony and everything that they had done, <laughs> everything they had done to me or whatever. So then, at the same time, um, at the same time, I was going through at my own home or whatever, and um, I just had had enough. And um, when I when they finally let me go home, I had upstairs. They told me I couldn't go. I couldn't climb the stairs. They told me I couldn't lift anything more than five pounds. Okay, the baby was six or seven. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> and you can't go upstairs, and you can't do this, and um, I don't think the only help I had was Yana. Yes. <laughs> she was 10, <laughs> so she took on all the, all the duties. That's why we're so close. People yes. don't understand. Yes. She was there when, yes. when things got rough and whatever, and so, um, so yeah, and uh, so... She had been there. Even um, I got into it, I guess, with my husband. I got into it. You know, after a while, you can, you've taken all you can take and you can't take anymore. Yes. So at this yes. particular time, I decided I'm going to kill myself. Oh, oh, no. oh no. I'm a I'm, I'm big girl now. So I'm going to take um, the Tylenol, the extra strength Tylenol. Took a whole bottle of extra strength Tylenol. And she kept on rubbing on me. And telling me I was gonna be all right, and I slept for three days, <laughs> but I didn't die. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I guess I guess I ain't, it ain't meant for me to die. <laughs> so, so I guess I guess I better get up and take care of these children. <laughs> so, I tell you, but that that was the that was the second time. The, um, the, to tell the truth, when I was born, I was born stillborn. So they went and they went in to take me and found out that I was still still alive or brought me back or whatever. So that was, you know, probably the, probably the second time, you know. And no matter what I did, no matter how many times I went through this, this, and this, I'm still here. Amen. I'm still here. And so. Finally, I just had enough or whatever. My husband, he was in a motorcycle club, and he had a motorcycle. And God had blessed me with a home early in life. And I had, um, I had worked, and I was the one to put the down payment on the house. And I was the one. And um, it was, I know it was God. Do you know how you know that you know? 
And he, um, the amount of money that I made, every time I got a check, I took it to my lawyer. I didn't cash the check, I just took the check to the lawyer. Just took the check to the lawyer. By the time I did my income tax for the year, I had made, um, I think I made, did I make? I don't know, but the, the income tax was $3,333.33. The down payment on my house was three, $3,333.33. <laughs> You know that you know that you yes, know that it was God. <laughs> and, and it was my and it was my house, even though he lived there. <laughs> we do understand those yes, things. Yes. That that's uh, Yana's dad or whatever. And, um, and um, he he was a he was a mess. But <laughs> I thank the Lord for my children, though. Yes, you know, yes. through, through it all, it was it, yes. it's a blessing or whatever. Yes. And um, I didn't treasure my house, but it was my house. So, um, and I had gold, I think there was gold linoleum in the kitchen and gold carpet throughout the bottom of the house, the dining room in the kitchen and the entryway. Um, and I had a sun porch. So I really loved the house, but I had taken the children I was fed up with him anyway, but I had taken the children to my mom's for Easter break. And then that Monday, you know, you go back, they go back to school because we were in the north or whatever. So I went and I, I had a car and I, um, and I drove it. He had, that was probably the third car, second, third car. One, he put sugar in the gas tank. So. Wow. <laughs> and the other one, I think he, uh, the other one, I think he cut the brakes. <laughs> so <laughs> there was a whole lot. I can laugh about it now, but <laughs> I went through, and uh, so I came. I I came home on Wednesday after. Um, I, it was probably the I probably the Wednesday after Easter. I don't know. They used to have long Easter breaks, which was their spring break. I came home on Wednesday. I drove by myself. I left my children at my mother's house. And I came home before cell phones, honey. Because I still have that picture if I had a cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> I came in the house and we had a he had a garage. The house had a garage and a basement. Walkout basement and a garage. And he had a um and he had a motorcycle, like I said. But when I came in my house, the engine was sitting in the dining room on my gold carpet. I lost it. I didn't say anything. I just lost it. Okay. All right. <laughs> and I just, there was, I got to the phone and I called and nobody answered. And I'm like, I was trying to call different people to say what was going I couldn't tell nobody. Nobody was there for me. Wow. Nobody wow. but God. <laughs> yeah. I, so, I um, so I went upstairs and I got all the dirty clothes. Like that's what I came for. And I um, got back in my car and I went back to um, went back to the house. And um, I the next day, my husband, no matter what his faults were, if he went to work, he was going to be at work. He was going to be there all day, and I knew this. He was not sick and he wasn't coming home so he's gonna be there so i called the job early when i knew he was check you know signing in or whatever <laughs> punching the clock i called the job and he was there okay. so after i called the job and i knew he was there and that meant it was seven o'clock or eight in the morning and he was going to be there till four anyway right. i my brother had a truck and i talked to my brother i said can i borrow your truck Borrow my truck. You know how brothers are. Yeah. <laughs> I said, yeah, I need to borrow. <laughs> I need to borrow your truck. <laughs> so he uh, he said, okay, don't don't do this, don't do that, whatever. Well, but yeah, you had to hear. You had to hear. So so I borrowed the truck and I drove back down to my house. And I packed up what I wanted, which wasn't much. Four boxes of four kids. Forgot myself. But <laughs> that was all right, too. 
So, and whatever, whatever else. And I call some friends and I say, oh, you want some furniture? <laughs> I had people just coming getting furniture and doing this. And I knew my time limit and stuff like that. And I'm packing up the truck and doing whatever I was doing. And all of a sudden, his father comes by. And his father says, something about what are you doing? Hey, what you doing? I said, I'm leaving and I'll never be back again. And I'm not coming back. And that's exactly the way I did it. I left and I never came back. I figured out a way to rent the house out. I did all kinds of things because I was in charge and I knew how to maneuver. So I never lost the house. Um, and I was separated for five years and we had to um, do something with the house um, during the divorce. And he lied, of course, and uh, said that he was going to pay bills with the money or whatever. And so they put it in escrow and that, whatever, we won't call him any names. <laughs> but he didn't pay any bills and he left the money in escrow. My lawyer calls me and asks me, do I want my money? Okay. Okay. <laughs> he said, it's been sitting here for five years and he ain't never claimed it. Do you want it? <laughs> so, <laughs> so I, um, and I had been in Kentucky for three years and then after the divorce, I decided, well, that was my place of peace. I'm going back. So I went back to Kentucky. I went back to Kentucky after divorce, after whatever. And um, that's how I got my husband now. Lord knows. <laughs> if it ain't one thing, it's another. <laughs> so, but I know that I know that I know that God said he's the one. My big mouth should have never told him. God said he's the one. He still don't know why he's the one. But God knew that nobody else gonna put up with him. <laughs> Ain't nobody else gonna pray for him. Yeah. Ain't nobody else gonna be there for him in sickness and in health. Right. So God knew he needed me. And yes, he took care of me and my children. I thank the Lord for the support. But I know it was God. And there's so many things that we go through that we know that we know that is God. And God has truly brought um, took us, well that was in Kentucky I'm, I met him in July and married him in December mm -hmm. and um, we've been together ever since, it'll be 38 years come December 31st Wow. so wow. no matter what you say, through the tough times through yep. the good and through the bad you know, yep. if God gives you an assignment don't give up on the assignment. If God, if you know that you know that God said do it, then you have to obey God. And if I can't tell you anything else, I can tell you obedience. Amen. Obedience is better than sacrifice. So I'm holding on and I'm going to stay there. And I don't care who tell me to leave. I ain't going nowhere. So you got to be a... a Real good reason. God got, like I told him before when I left one time, I went for, for a week or whatever. I said, God got to come down himself and tell me not to go. I said, because I'm out of here. <laughs> I need a break. I tell you. And I mean, I've been through nervous breakdowns and everything else, but I know who God is. No matter what I go through, God is my all in all. And so I can say a never-changing God in an ever-changing world, Amen. you know. And in my life, things have changed. In my 72 years of living, yes. I've gone through some things. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But God is still God, and he's still on the throne. Amen. I accepted Christ as a child. Didn't even know nothing about accepting Christ. But I knew I needed a friend, and my friend was Jesus. Amen. It didn't matter. I was in the closet by myself, me, Jesus, and my dolls, and we had church. Hallelujah. And, and back then, I was a Methodist, didn't know nothing about holiness. But that's what I say about my first husband. When, 
with because his mother and father were saved and were in holiness, Church of God in Christ, I learned about God and I have a foundation. Church of God in Christ will give you a foundation. I tell you, you go to church every time the church doors open. Yes. And yes, I raised them up under the pews. <laughs> it, didn't, it didn't matter. We had all night prayer and everything to go with it. But it was my foundation. And I won't give it, I wouldn't give it away for anything in the world to have Jesus. I mean, and then getting the Holy Ghost. I got saved. And a lot of people, they, you know, don't, haven't done it or what, haven't been through it. But I got saved and filled with the Holy Ghost the same night. Wow. Speaking with tongues. Amen. And I spoke in tongues for three days. Wow. I couldn't, duh, 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 I couldn't stop. Mm -hmm. So I needed that. Yes. And it's what carried me through and it's what's carrying me through. And I'm going to be all that God called me to be. And I'm going to walk in my purpose. And I'm going to complete my destiny. Amen. 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 I think we've had a good time tonight. Amen. <laughs> amen, amen, and amen. And we're going to just take this. Um, um, I think I'm going to dismiss us from this setting, but let us just fellowship for a while, because we have a while before we have to get out of here, and then I'm going to let y'all go, so that y'all can come back in the morning, and we've got a full day ahead, Amen. and we're going to talk on this um, subject. I'm going to, I want to give some thanks right now before I um, dismiss, but I'm thanking Minister Jamie. Amen. And Lady <laughs> And correct. But Minister Jamie, I can tell you a few things about Minister Jamie. <laughs> They're all good. They're all good. <laughs> he he has really inspired me and has been there and I I don't have any complaints. I don't have anything, you know, that I can say bad about him. And I used to tell him when I when I first met him, I said, uh, okay. He was teaching he is a teacher. He was teaching, but I'm like, all this stuff don't go together. <laughs> he He's putting this with this, but it's right, but it's not God. You know, every good thing is not a God thing. So I prayed for him. And that's the, the kind of person I am. And I think everybody in this room knows that I'm a, I'm a prayer warrior. And I don't care what's going on, I'm going to pray. And... God's going to do the rest. Amen. So it was the compassion and he, Jamie doesn't change. That's all I can say. He doesn't change. He's the same no matter what. But I'm so glad that he's found his purpose and that he's doing what God called him to do. And what he's doing, God put it on my heart. That's what this is all about, in case anybody didn't know. God put it on my heart to do this for Minister Jamie and Lady Eden to set the atmosphere and to um, push them to the next level. And God is doing great things, and they just don't know what's next, but it's going to be great. And I thank the Lord for that. He said um, to do this and to do the platform that he's doing, introduce him, let him introduce himself, and what he's doing and let everybody know. So I think we're gonna do that tomorrow. Let him tell you about his program and tell you about his TV broadcast and everything that he's doing for the um, upbuilding of the kingdom. This is all about God and he's an awesome teacher. His wife's an awesome psalmist, but together they work together. I tell you, they fit jointly. And I thank the Lord for that. And when I found him on um, internet, I'm like, I had to listen a couple of times, but once I started listening, I said, I'm going to be a part of this. <laughs> and no matter what they say, on Wednesday, I'm going to be a part of this. <laughs> I tell everybody, this is my Bible study. Um, and no matter what, 
I got to stop what I'm doing. You got to stop what you're doing because I'm going to Bible study. And don't call me because I'm in Bible study. And on top of that, I told my daughter about it. And she's a bigger fan than I am. <laughs> and she got more input and everything else. And I tell you, we have a time on Wednesdays. Hey, yes, it's a good time. And I mean, it gets so good that we start with part one, we end up with part two. Okay. The next week, we on part three. And this last episode, we was on part four. <laughs> so... You're going to enjoy yourself tomorrow. I tell you, the questions, the answers, Lady Eatman's going to be our moderator. And we have people coming in, and this table is going to be oh, on fire. And I know it is. So we got a part one and a part two. And it's been a pleasure meeting Lady Eatman. And um, I just tell you, they're, they're just a blessing. They are truly a blessing. And God is truly blessing them. And they are going to be on the map. I see them going from place to place, setting up these um, meetings and uh, having panel discussions openly out. You know, it's good to have them in the, uh, on the, um, YouTube and things like that. But it's even better when you can go to the city and do it in the city in person and get to meet all these people that are following you. So that's what it's all about. And God told me to do it, and I'm walking in obedience, and we're just going to have a good time. Okay? Let's go from them to um, Marilyn Joyce. <laughs> I, yes, way, 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 way back. Yep, yep, yep. So it's been 25 years, maybe 30. And... Um, Matter of fact, I've known uh, Marilyn longer than I've known Jamie because I met Jamie when I got here to Augusta. I met Marilyn in Hawaii. And, yes, in the 90s, yep. Matter of fact, it was um, end of the 80s, the beginning of the 90s because um, in 91, my father passed away and the Lord told me to come home. And so we were going to stay. We were going to my husband had already enlisted to stay another year in Hawaii, or another so many years in Hawaii. But um, I heard the Lord say, it's time to go now. I said, okay. But he told me up in the air over the Pacific Ocean. He's got a sense of humor. I said, go where? <laughs> Is the plane going now? <laughs> He said, it's time to go now. But he said, by the time we land, you'll know what I'm saying to you. So I knew by that time. I, I had just come back from um, burying my father. And my mother needed me to come home. So I, um, I, my father, what I, he, he, passed, yeah, he passed in October. And by um, February... Uh, February 14th, they packed up our household goods. I know they packed up our bed on Valentine's Day. <laughs> but they put us up in a hotel up until the time for us to um, to board the plane and come on home. So so we, we and home is called Augusta, Georgia. I have been in Augusta, Georgia longer than I've been any place else in my life. Okay. So you all should celebrate. Okay. <laughs> Truly, truly, I've, I've been all over the place, but this is home. So um, when when you're in a certain place over 30 years, yeah. you just call it home. <laughs> and the time is going, and I'm not going anywhere. I told my husband, you just put me near a highway. And I mean, I'm almost walking distance to the interstate. So you give me an interstate, and, and I'm all right. And then... I had gone through houses and houses and houses and land until I told him I wanted to live in West Augusta if I had to stay in Augusta. Because these people in Augusta, I tell you, when I first got here, that mentality. <laughs> but I'm so glad that so many people came and brought their mentality to this place. <laughs> so, and I was like, okay. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna be obedient. Like I said, I'm gonna be obedient. I'm from Jersey. My husband's from Alabama, so 
we're sitting right here <laughs> in the middle. And so he that's where he is this evening. He had to go back to Alabama and um, bury a um, childhood friend, a graduate. Um, matter of fact, he probably met him when he was 11 or 12. The, he was in a foster home, but the people across the street took him in as their son. So they raised my husband along with their own children. So he had to go back to his funeral. They were they graduated together. They grew up together, and they lived right across the street. So I tell you, we're losing people left and right, left and right. I've lost a lot of friends, but God said, "Stay faithful," you know, and you be faithful, and um, pray for your brothers and your sisters, and keep them encouraged and lifted up. So. I can go on to Cassandra, and I can go on to Linda Broom, and Cassandra and I have been acquaintances. Now we best friends. <laughs> now we besties. <laughs> so uh, I met her in uh, Girl Outreach. She was she was a lot younger. I was too. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 And um, and I knew one day and I was like uh, these people in this church and you know you don't talk about people in the church but I was like these people in this church first place they don't like me and God said I don't care I called you there and you go be there I don't care what the people say about you so I said okay God there goes obedience again so through it all uh, we had some episode go on and um, I was going to the ladies fellowship and God gave me that as an assignment so he said to go to the ladies fellowship I said why am I going to this ladies fellowship and then he says I want you to support the leader no matter what so I said oh, okay I'm going to be obedient I don't even know the leader but I'm going to support him because you said so so and things, all things went haywire, and I stood there and I supported her. And I'm still supporting her. <laughs> and through it all, I fell in love with her. <laughs> She's precious. <laughs> She's precious. She's precious. She's precious. And to go on from her, I also met Linda Broom. I, Met her at Girl Outreach, but I think I met her before Girl Outreach, so it was still in that same environment or whatever. And uh, we just connected, and we still connected. It doesn't matter. Come what they say, hell or high water. <laughs> no matter what the need is, God has told me to support her and be there with her. So I've been there with her and her daughter. I've been there with her and her granddaughter. And whatever else comes up, I'm still standing. So, And she knows that I'm her friend and I'll always be her friend. So, friend to the end? Okay. But my best friend over here, let me tell you about this girl. <laughs> yeah, she is taking me through some things too. But she is truly been a blessing. <laughs> She takes me through the ups and the downs, the marriages and the unmarriages and the divorces and whatever she go through. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna hold my baby until and I might hold her afterwards, but I'm gonna hold my baby. And I don't care what anybody got to say about it. That's my baby. And I can hold it if I want to. <laughs> And I can love on her and I can be everything to her because she's everything to me. And I tell you, no matter what my situation is, she will follow me to the moon and back. And she will support me. And it don't matter where we going. No matter what it is. Yeah, I sit over there in the passenger seat and I am a driver. But she drives me everywhere. And she's like, Mama, you going to drive? <laughs> I said, if, if you if you're gonna fall asleep and kill us, yeah, I'll cry. <laughs> so when I know that she's nodding or doing something, <laughs> I'm like, uh, 
get from behind that wheel and give me that wheel because I can drive and I can drive all night no matter what the situation is. So, but I am proud of her and I'm proud of all my children. And like um, I said, and I've told many people, when they ask me, how, how are your children? I say they're healthy, wealthy, and wise. And I tell you, healthy, yes, my, I almost lost my, one of my children, but God restored his health. God. And I tell you, he is healthy. He's just as healthy as you and me. He had um, also colitis. They removed his colon. But he goes to the bathroom like you and me. And I don't know what's in there because I ain't took no x-rays and I ain't been looking. But I know that I know that I know that my God done healed him. Because I was there when God told me to get the prayer warriors to pray for him. Because he wasn't going to make it through the day. I was there when I had to take my children up to visit their brother for the last time and know that he's going through surgery. He was in surgery for over 12 hours. 12 hours. And they told me, because uh, mama, my mother came and my mother, <laughs> I was caught up in traffic. And when my mother got there, they wouldn't give her any information. They just said he was gone. But he was gone to surgery, not gone. <laughs> Oh, mother, okay. Okay. Mother, mother was upset and whatever, whatever, but, but I, I was praying. I was on the highway. It didn't matter where I was. I'm praying for my child. And I took the children up, and it was 114 degrees that day. I took my children. We didn't have no air conditioning back then. In the car or anything else. I took the children to see the brother, and then they told me that they was going to have to do emergency surgery on him. And can I get back? But you talk about driving 50 miles and driving 50 miles back again because I had to take my babies home and come back to him because I worked the whole time and I gave him to the hospital. I gave him to the nurses. I gave him to the doctors and I gave him to God. I said, because I've got to work and I've got children at home. So I can only come one day a week to visit this child. Wednesday or twice a week, Wednesdays, because I was off on Wednesdays and some Sundays. So... God allowed me to do that, and God healed him, so I thank God for that. You know, we were able to go. That's how we got to Hawaii, because he was a special needs child. And um, I got there, and they were supposed to do surgery and hook him back up. And the uh, surgeon had broke his back, and, they, and he was out the um, military. They was discharging him from the military. But his, um, um, what's the... Um, the doctor that does all his other, um, did his um, pre-op and all that, you know, the doctor he was seeing at that time. He said, the only doctor that I know, beside, besides the doctor that was supposed to do it, he said, is, this, is the Surgeon General of the hospital, Tripler Hospital, Surgeon General, and he don't operate. No. He said, but I'm going to go in on your behalf and ask him to do the surgery and if he does the surgery, I'll go in surgery. I'll go into the surgery with him. And they went in. And I know that I know that it was God. And they did the surgery. And like I said, they put an artificial colon in. They made him a sack because all he had was his small intestines. They had taken all his large intestines. So they made him a sack. And they hooked it up to his small intestines. And um, like I said, he goes to the bathroom like you and me. And, that was back, uh, I think he was nine when he had the surgery. Wow. 15, uh, 17, 18 when he was rehooked up. And what's your brother, 50 years old now? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> 50 years old. So, you know, and that, that's all about God. And see, that's why I am who I am. Because I trusted God all these years yes. through, it, through it all. Do the ups and the downs and the this and the that. And I can stand. It don't matter what you're doing to me, I'm going to stand. Because I know who my God is. And that's what it's all about. Standing no matter what. And I tell you, so he is fine. I got what? Tell me how old your children are. Lord have mercy. Oh, I'm 53. Oh, she's 53. He's 51. Yeah. 47, 48, and then the baby girl is 42. Yeah, she, 
or 43, I can't remember. This is, this is uh, 23, she's 43, with her master's degree. And she gave me pure tea. I tell you, I went through with her. And she told me, like somebody else told somebody else, that they wasn't going to school today. I said, excuse me? She was bigger than I was, a whole lot bigger than I was. I just grabbed her ankles and threw her down. <laughs> I said, I don't care where you go, but you're getting out of here. <laughs> you go, you getting out of here. So whatever she did, whatever, she ended up quitting school. She ended up having all them babies and doing all that mess and junk and everything. And then all of a sudden, guess what? She came to herself. Like the like they said in the Bible, they, yeah, they come to themselves. You know, and it tells you if you train up a child in the way it should go, you know, it might depart for a season. But guess what? It's coming back. It's coming back. And I'm going to stand on those words. So uh, she is doing great. So, um, as a matter of fact, she got her grandson this week. <laughs> I had I had him dropped off because whoo oh Jesus I'm a great grandmother and all I got is boys yes I got I got a few grand a few granddaughters but I got four and I had three for the long I had three for the longest and then all of a sudden I, I got this other one she gonna be three in November and the, and the great grand is gonna be the youngest great grand I think he's gonna be um, seven next week no. October 13th. I got a I got a daughter on the 13th. I got a granddaughter on the 13th and a great grandson on the 13th. Yeah. And all of them was born on Friday the 13th. I said, what's this all about? Yeah. <laughs> and just like now, his birthday gonna be on Friday the 13th. Yeah. So I tell you, so I've I've got them and God has blessed me with them and you know, you got generations. So I thank God for that. And this is truly a blessing. And this time has truly been a blessing. I was able to express myself and just run my mouth, which I don't never do. <laughs> you got to really get to know me to, to find out my secrets. <laughs> and I think y'all found out a few of them. Right? <laughs> so I guess this is what this is all about, my coming out party. So um, um, I got another friend here. Yes, I do. Yes, dear. Lori. Yes, dear. Yes, yes, dear. Yes, that's my friend over there. Yes, yes, yes. She, she, ever since I met her, man, I guess we've known each other about a year now. And um, but she's truly a blessing. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So she's on that list with the rest of y'all. She'll be here. <laughs> No matter what, so uh, you know when you find friends like that, and uh, you can count on, and uh, that are standing with you and standing for you, you just say thank you, Jesus, and keep it moving. So, um, excited about what's going to happen tomorrow, and I'm excited about everybody's testimony and what everybody has to say, and the introduction. Uh, we're going to do introductions of different people, but um, I'm going to. Uh, close out right now. Mar Marilyn, do you mind coming over here and um, I'm not sure what I'm praying for us? <laughs> see, I like calling people on the spot. <laughs> Y'all can see that. It's truly been a blessing tonight. Let's stand and, and um, end the evening in prayer. Yes. Father God, we just thank you tonight, dear Lord, for your never-ending, overflowing, overabundant mercy, love, and grace toward us. We thank you for what you are getting ready to impart into our lives, what you've imparted tonight. Help us, dear Father, to stay focused on you, on your plan, on your purpose for us. Take us safely, travel with mercies in Jesus' name, and let all that need 
that you have ordained to be in our presence tomorrow. Be here. Let us be mindful to stay focused on you and let your Holy Spirit reign and be in charge and be in control. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.